my YouTube channel. For those who are new here, my name is Anais and I make videos related to Kubernetes and the cloud native ecosystem. Now, in this video, I want to introduce you to Kubernetes security, specifically how you can get started with Kubernetes security with minimal effort, without having to learn a new tool, something new, right? So we're going to look at Starboard and how you can run Starboard inside of your Kubernetes cluster and get insights on your different workloads running within your cluster and the vulnerabilities that those might have. Let's get started. So let's assume this is our Kubernetes cluster here. Okay. And then within the Kubernetes cluster, we have different namespaces, right? We have our default namespace and we have different namespaces depending on the namespace that we spin up and depending on the applications that we're going to run. So in one of those namespaces, this is going to be our starboard system namespace that's going to run the starboard operator. And the starboard operator then deploys several custom resource definitions. So as we know from previous videos that you can check out up here, link right now, custom resource definitions basically extend the Kubernetes API with custom APIs that basically refer to specific resources that are specific to an application. And we've seen that with lots of other cloud native tools before, they all extend the Kubernetes API. The power of Kubernetes is the Kubernetes API. Remember that. So here, <laughs> going to Starboard, we have Starboard deployed within our cluster. And that has several different custom resource definitions, vulnerability scans, configuration audits, CIS benchmark, and pen tests. Okay. So <laughs> these are all part of the Starboard toolkit. And these are going to be basically um, scanning your workloads for different types of vulnerabilities, for configuration issues, um, for lots of different issues. <laughs> and then the, the findings are summarized in custom resource definitions. Now, the main benefit, if you're using Starboard then, is that you don't have to learn a new tool. You can access all of the resources within your Kubernetes cluster. You deploy Starboard within Kubernetes like you deploy other resources in Kubernetes. And you access those reports like you access other resources inside of your Kubernetes cluster. Now, the reports can also be accessed as a HTML and PDF report, like as a website, basically, or as a report, uh, or through Prometheus and Grafana. And you can also access it as part of the Lens extension that we're going to look at in another video, or Octant. Now, I haven't tried these two yet, and <laughs> it's on my list, so uh, be patient with me there. Um, now, you can have Starboard as an operator, that's what we're going to talk about in this video, or as a command, like as a CLI installed on your terminal, right? Now, you would use the, the command line um, for Starboard, for example, if you want to integrate Starboard either in your CI CD pipeline or if you manually want to trigger the ports through Starboard, right? Um, and now the operator will live inside its um, Starboard system namespace and will continuously scan any resources that change. So basically, the Starboard operator inside the Starboard system is responsible to scan any new deployments. So we have our deployments and whenever there's a new deployment popping up, the Starboard system, like the operator inside the Starboard system namespace, the Starboard operator, will go ahead and scan that deployment for vulnerabilities, for example, and then create a report for that deployment. Now, reports are part of deployments. So they have the same life cycle as deployments in a way. So they are basically, if you have a tree, they are dependent on the deployments. If you delete the deployment, the reports are going to get deleted from within the cluster. That's kind of how you can have to, how you have to envision the dependencies. Um, so, and that's basically what happens. So whenever you make updates to the deployment, such as changing the container image, that's when a new report is going to get triggered from the Starboard operator within the Starboard system namespace. It's going to create a new report. Now, Here's a little example of how that all works. Here's some more of the benefits that I highly suggest you to check out <laughs> of using Starboard. And then we can head over to the documentation. Now within the documentation, we can see we have the Starboard CLI and we have the Starboard operator. I'm going to focus on the Starboard operator in this video and on installation, we're going to use Helm specifically. So we're going to add the Helm charts from Aqua. As you can see, I've already added that. So we can also say Helm repo update. You want to do that just in generally every once in a while since any of those Helm charts that you have that you're using might change over time, right? 
Now, once we have that, we can go ahead and we can deploy the Helm chart inside of our cluster. Now, the command is also here provided. You can use the standard command. It's just specifying the namespace that it should de be deploying the starboard operator in and then that it should create the namespace. Then it will set two values. Now, you can either define a separate values YAML file that you can then apply. So Helm allows you to define your own Helm values. We're going to take a, lot of, a look at that in a second. So in this case, set target namespace default. So it's going to monitor the default namespace and then set trivi ignore unfixed true. Now under the hood for vulnerability scans, Starbot is using Trivi, which is another open source aqua tool that you can contribute to. It's open source. And um, it's basically saying that all vulnerabilities that do not have a fix yet, that basically where your container images that you depend on that can't deploy the fix yet, those vulnerabilities should be ignored. That's what this, what this line is saying ultimately. And then it's just specifying the Helm chart version, which is 9, 0.9.1. <laughs> so we are going to deploy that. And then we can check out our cluster. Now, as you know, I love using K9S. And here we have our starboard operator spinning up in the starboard system namespace. A new report is run. That report is run through a job. So basically, starboard system is creating a job. I'm navigating different, different keyboards. <laughs> um, it's creating a Kubernetes job. And that job is then scanning the deployment. So it's a one-time thing. And based on that scan, then the report is created. That's kind of it. So under custom resource definitions, you can find the overview of all the custom resource definitions that uh, the starboard operator has access to and is creating inside of your cluster. We're going to go ahead and we're going to deploy an application, which I have here in my manifest repository. So I'm going to say kubectl apply and now this deployed the deployment and then the service into the default namespace we can see it here span up and then we can filter for let's filter for jobs we can see that here are two jobs now these jobs have been created once we created the deployment and the deployment has a replica set of two. So two parts are going to be spun up for the deployment. And for each of those parts, there's going to be a vulnerability report that's scanning the container image inside the pod, because obviously Starboard doesn't know if they run the same container image or separate container images. In my case, they're running the same container images, but they could also be running each part could also be running separate container image. So if you go to parts, these both parts, could run different container images or the same. In my case, they're the same. Now, once the jobs have completed, we have a resource which is called vulnerability reports, which are part of the custom resource definitions of Starboard. And then we can go ahead and we can hit describe, describe that resource basically. And uh, once we scroll down, we can see that here the vulnerability is described. So for example, here's a vulnerability the CVE for the vulnerability. We can also see here's the fixed version, the version that we have installed or that we're dependent on. And there's a long list of vulnerabilities. As you can see, it's not the best container image that I'm running here. But ultimately, this kind of vulnerability report will be created for all of your deployments. So in addition to the vulnerability reports that we just took a look at, you can also, for example, look at the config auto reports, right? So how would you know if the config auto reports ran? Well, you can either look for the resource config auto report inside of your cluster, or if you want to make any modifications or check whether, for example, config auto reports are turned on for your starboard operator uh, installation, you can go to installation to a helm and you can have a look at the specific values that are applied alongside your helm chart. So in this case, the config auto reports are running with Polaris. So we're going to look for Polaris and scroll further down. So in this case, we have it turned on 
create config and you can see all of the values that you can modify here you could for example turn polaris off and then we can look for config audit reports and here's our config audit report with scan of polaris so we can describe it and you can have a look at the report itself I know it's a little bit difficult to look at the different reports from in your cluster. I've linked below the kubectl commands that you can use instead if you prefer to use kubectl instead of something like k9s. I always suggest people to use k9s, but it's your preference. <laughs> now, in the next videos, I'm going to show you, first of all, how to use the Starboard Lens extension. So you have a UI <laughs> or you have the reports visualized somewhere, but also how you can use GitOps to manage the Starboard operator, but also to use something like the Argo CD UI to view all the resources that are created through the Starboard operator and also the relationship between different resources. So for example, between your security reports and your workloads. So please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to stay updated with upcoming videos. If there are any comments, questions, any suggestions, any feedback, any questions, anything you want to ask, comment below. Also linked below is the Starboard operator and the Starboard um, GitHub repository, so make sure to give us a star. <laughs> make sure to join the Aqua open source Slack community and ask your questions there. We're excited to see you there. I hope you have an amazing day and to see you next time. Bye bye.